I calculate how many minutes ha I have left to get to work. Girl, you better hurry up. Oh my god, no. Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome to Love is a Game. This is a game that is currently on Kickstarter right now. If you guys want to fund it, it's about a girl who, um, you know, has an unfulfilling life and whatever, and she finds joy in playing Otome games. Wow, sounds really familiar. And, um, one day, all the characters from the game, like, come into real life. So that's just, like, the ultimate dream. Fictional characters becoming- coming into real life, you know what I mean? So they become real boys, pretty much. And, um, there's- I know there's a bunch of different rooms because a bunch of, like, handsome men on the screen right now. All anime boys. <laughs> so, uh, this is just the demo right now, but, um, if the game gets fully funded and whatever, I, I think I'm gonna do a Let's Play on it. You guys let me know, because this is the first time I'm ever actually seeing anything about this game. Um, but I will talk about the Kickstarter later on. Right now, I need to play with boys, so we should just get started. First name, Willow Bates. So this is the, the original name of the character. I'm just gonna use it for now, just for the demo, because, you know, huh? Willow was a recently college graduate who works on a small cafe and lives alone in her childhood home. Lonesome and suffocated by the tedium of working an unfulfilled job, our heroine finds a quiet joy in Atomic Games. With a few friends and a non-existing love life, she has grown to attach to the happiness brought by romance novels. Isn't that- doesn't that sound really familiar? <laughs> Whoa. Prologue, be careful what you wish for. I like the art style, it's really cute. I glance at the clock on the wall for what must have been the millionth time my, since my last shift started. Oh my god, this is bringing me back memories because I used to work in a, a catering. In catering. I used to do catering um, a few years ago. Uh, that was a nightmare. I'm just going to let you guys know that right now. It was the worst time ever. <laughs> and I would always be looking at the clock and be like, please let the shift be over. Yes, I can go home now. I hurry behind the counter and slip off my apron. You, oh, I should do voices. <clears throat> this is probably gonna be dumb because I don't- I'm not really good at making voices. I'm not a voice actor. You're done. <laughs> I jumped at the sound of my vo boss's voice right behind me. Uh-oh, he doesn't sound happy. Why does he always have to sneak up on me like that? Slowly I turn around and try to smile at him. He looks pissed. Always so quick to just run out. He scoffs and frowns at me. Not this again. Well, I pause for- I pause as he folds his arms and gla glares at me. The, the schedule says my shift ends at 5 p.m. I feel myself growing nervous as the boss glares at- as my boss glares at me. I just have to cash in my tips and then I can go home. Uh, here's cash tips for the day! I hand my boss a, a wad of bills from the front pouch of my apron and follow him to the cash register. He counts the money before handing me back- handing me back a single bill. This is barely anything. Uh, and the tips from the customers who paid with a card? My boss sneers at me. I thought you were in a rush. I told- I'll total it up later. Fuck this guy. This guy's a fucking asshole. He did this yesterday too. I don't- Before I can say another word, he turns around and walks away. Ugh, rude. I guess I'll get the rest of my tips at the end of the week. As soon as I walk out of the cafe, I check the notifications on my phone. I'd seen it blinking at work and had a feeling about what it was. Yes! A slight smile spreads across my face. The anniversary story is finally out. It's been one year since the release of the game. <laughs> this girl is too much like me. I'm such a loser like that too. When games come out, oh, I just freak out about them. I'm such a loser. My excitement fades slightly as I notice the price and I realize I'm faced with an all too familiar decision. I've kind of wanted to grab dinner on the way home. I glance back on my phone. But I've been waiting for the anniversary sub story of mine. <laughs> this girl is too much like me. It's either games or like something you really need. Can I just say right now, always pick the things that you really need like food and rent and stuff like that. Don't be dumb and pick games. As much as I, I do that, I'm really bad at that. Oh my god, all right, I'm gonna be a total loser and buy the story. I really want to read the story. Just as I purchase the story, my stomach growls. <laughs> Crap. I have leftovers at home, right? <sighs> oh gosh. Finally home. Oh, that's a turtle. I sit down at my bed with the dinner and start up the game on my phone. 
After I graduated college, my parents finally bought their dream house on the beach. They were kind enough to let me live in my childhood home while I paid off the loans, found a job, and got on my feet off the ground. Well, that's nice of them. At least they gave you a house. Since then, this is how I spent my evenings. Playing Atomic Games. <laughs> this is too real, oh my god. My current favorite is the one I'm playing tonight. There's a, there's a tsundere out <laughs> I'm dead, oh my god. Idiot, I'm trying to oh, idiot, I'm trying to say that I like you. The childhood friend, Jin. Remember, we made a promise. The ambitious Faust. I want to introduce you as my fiance. <laughs> the flirt, Dimitri. Oh god, please save me. You can let me comfort you. The sweetheart, Milo. I'll be the one who makes you smile. And the cold but secretly romantic, Enzo. You've taught me what it means to care about someone. I don't know what voices I'm doing right now, this is really stupid. <laughs> Can't even decide who's my favorite is, but at least with Atomi games, I can just buy all their stories. I freeze as I realize what I, I just thought. That's kind of sad. <sighs> wow, it's been a whole year, a whole year since I found this game. I stare blankly at, I stare blankly at my phone. What does it say about me and this, this is the only thing I look forward to? I gaze out the window at the now dark sky. I thought after I'd gone off to college, I'd have everything to get together. A great job, money, and maybe I'd fall in love. The light from my phone screen continues to cast a glow on my bedroom ceiling. Can I just say this right now, if anybody's like in college or whatever. Um, I know everybody has like high hopes for like when you graduate college, you get the dream job, you get your money, you get your house, you get a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Uh, in reality, it's not like that. That's what we hope for all the time. But if even if it doesn't happen right away, you don't need to feel discouraged about it. You know what I mean? Because these things take time. So if you're just sitting in your room playing Atome games all the time and you feel bad about it, don't feel bad. But you should work on to like, you know, making your other goals happen. That's how it works. But the only good thing that that's in my life right now is this game. I read the words, I love you, Willow, displayed on my phone. They're not real. My chest grows tight and I look away from the game. The only people that make me happy are fictional. I find myself imagining what life would be like if I lived in the game, if I was a part of their world. You know, I think I, everybody does that, don't they? I do that. <laughs> I wish they were real. <sighs> I sigh again and quit out of the game. Yeah, right. I need a reality check if I really feel this way. I should put some effort into making my life better instead of wishing for the impossible. It's not bad to be a dreamer, you know, everybody just saying. I switch up the lamp beside my bed and crawl under the covers. I open up the game one more time to look at the start screen. Good night, guys! <laughs> That's so cute, she tells him good night. <laughs> Alright. Ugh. Rays of sunlight shine through the curtains, casting a glow across my bed. I roll over to my side and spot my phone just where I left it. I looked at the background. An illustration of all the guys from the game. Oh my god. You know, okay, I can't blame her because like if I look at my phone right now, this is my wallpaper, guys. It's Life is Strange price field because that is my ship. My ultimate ship forever. <laughs> I roll over to the side and spot my phone just where I left it. Good morning. I feel a smile tugging at the corner of my mouth as I remember the story I read last night. Ugh, that ending. I clutch my phone and close to, close to my chest. <sighs> kind of want to reread it. I'm about to start up the game when I notice the time. It's that late already? I scramble out of bed, tripping out of my feet, tangling in the blanket and kicked off my bed while I was asleep. Oh god. Ouch. I've got to hurry if I'm going to make it to work on time. I shake myself loose from the blanket and hurry to get ready as quickly as possible. Oh god, and then we have a dick for a boss as well, right? I got dressed and fixed my hair in a rush, but I was still running behind. I checked the time again and start walking a little faster. If I hurry up fast enough, I should make it. As I shift my foot for, to foot, I stare at the red. Do I cross the light waiting for it to change? Oh my god, who is this handsome man? Oh my goodness. What the fuck? My eyes fall on a man standing be below the crossing light on the other side of the street. For some reason, I found myself unable to look away. He's so pretty! <laughs> He readjusts his jacket, tugging at the collar. He looks so cool. Catches me looking at him, and I feel my heart flooding in my cheeks. <laughs> oh god, I was staring. Oh my god. 
I peek at Adam again at the corner of my eye. Huh? He turns his face away from me, but I can still see that he's eyeing me, looking confused. <laughs> I like how he's trying to play it all cool and whatever. Is he trying to appear disinterest? Just as the crosswalk light turns to walk, the man hurries off. He wasn't waiting to cross? I watched him dart into a nearby bookstore before realizing that the light had already started to count down. Never mind that, I've gotta hurry! I started running to make it across the street before the crosswalk light turns red again. This man was totally checking us out, I'm just saying that right now. I checked the time on my phone. Crap! It's later than I thought, and now I only have 20 minutes before my shift starts! I can take a shortcut if I go through the park diagonally and get there faster. How many minutes left? I glance down and look at the time again to see that I still have a good 15 minutes left. Phew. I can definitely make it at this rate. Oh god, she's so clumsy, she's like me. This is too real. <laughs> Eek! My foot catches something and I tumble forward. As I shut my eyes and brace for the impact, I feel something break my fall. <laughs> oh no! I scrape my eye open to see a tuft of hair sticking in the front of me. Uh, I blink in horror as I realize I tripped and landed on someone. <laughs> I'm so sorry! I shouted an apology as he rubbed his eyes sleepily. Oh my, oh my god, why is everybody so cute? Damn it, lady! <laughs> the man flashes open and eye and glares at me. Uh-oh, he's mad! Suddenly, I found myself frozen as I stared into his eyes. He looks kind of familiar. Don't you watch where the hell you're going? I I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to! <sighs> the man has already closed his eyes again, and his lips were previously curled into a snarl, have relaxed. His chest rises up and down, slowly with heavy bre breaths. Is he... I blink and observe him for a second. <laughs> he went back to sleep? Unbelievable, he's asleep? I watch him for a few seconds before I'm sure he's actually fallen back asleep. My guilt fades suddenly without his imposing glare on me. Who just takes a nap in the middle of the grass? Well, there's a lot of people who does that, so you know. Oh, right, gotta hurry. I scramble out to my feet and begin to head through the park again. What's that? Soft music reaches my ears. The guitar is playing on the bench a little ways ahead of me. As I get closer, I see a guy standing motionless in front of the musician. Wow, that's so pretty. On a normal day, I would have stopped and listened for a bit, but I feel in the pit of my stomach twist as I calculate how many minutes ha I have left to get to work. Girl, you better hurry up. Oh my god, no. <laughs> as I hurry past the musician, a guy who is listening turns to look at me. Badum. Dun dun dun. He's so handsome. <laughs> My cheeks flush as I catch myself admiring him. But why is he staring at me like that? He smiles at me slightly before turning back to listen to the guitarist. Girl, you need to get to work? No, stop it. I slap myself out of it for a momentary gaze. I don't have time to be staring at guys. Work starts soon. Once again, I started walking quickly towards the cafe, passing out the musician and the dark-haired man. Oh god. What's happening? I whip my head around to see someone leaning casually against the tree. When I make contact with him, he winks at me. Oh my god, did you just see that? He winked at me. I see two women sitting on the bench right behind me, whispering to each other as they fawn over the man. I don't have time for this! I tuck my hair back and continue to hurry to work. I'm almost there! God, how far is her work? She's not even there yet. I finally reach the street of the cafe. Yes, at this race, I'll make it on time. A slight smile spreads across my face, and I feel my panic melting away. Just as I breathe a sigh of relief, I overheard a conversation. A man is arguing with a waitress in the outdoor patio seating. Oh my god. Uh. So attractive. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Sir, if you... I wouldn't be so careless as to forget my wallet. I don't know why I'm morphing into like a weird voice. <laughs> he seems quite flustered as he passes his pocket. The waitress watches him as her arms cross and her lips drawn into a tight line. Yikes, he looks kind of scary. As I get closer, I see that he's searching the same pockets he's already looked in. His fingers twitch with frustration. Poor guy. Before I can think about what I'm doing, I jog up to the patio railing. Hey! Both turn to look at me with a slight confusion expression. Here, I got it. I see that the man has only a coffee in front of him, and I snag a $5 out of my wallet, leaning over the railing and place the bill on the table. 
You just get the coffee. You just got the coffee, right? I don't need. The man seems even more flustered as he watches the waitress take the money from me. She argues. She shrugs and, he and heads back inside. Well, that's nice of her. <laughs> it's happened to me more times than I like. I try to reassure him, but his brows knit together as his as he eyes me. I can't tell if he's irritated or embarrassed. Probably a little bit of both. Miss, at least let me. He stares at talking to me again, but I've already re resumed walking to work. Don't worry about it. I called over my shoulder as I checked the time. Oh crap, only three minutes left. Wait. I ignore him and I pick up the pace, hurrying down the sidewalk. I'm almost there. <sighs> I slow down and I reach the cafe as I lean against the window, trying to catch my breath. Something warm and wet touches my hand. The hell's that? Startled, I look down to see a small puppy jumping jumping on my leg, licking my fingers. Oh! I think he likes you! He crouches next to the post where the puppy's leash shows tied. A warm smile spreads across his face as he watches the dog. Uh-huh. I reach down and pet the puppy, but it's already lost interest in me and runs back to the man. He chuckles and gives the puppy a good scratch behind the ears. Wow, he's so friendly. Is there something on my face? He notices me staring and looks up at me, confused. Oh, no, sorry. He looks, he looks like, oh my god, all these anime boys look like they belong in K-pop groups, okay? <laughs> I see my boss glance up at the clock through the window. Excuse me. Oh god. Oh, hey again, Willow. Close call. He stares up at me and I brush the fly away hairs out of my face. Ugh, he's so antagonizing. I gave up on trying to fix my hair. I can't even imagine how disheveled I look after rushing through my hair through my hair and makeup and then running to work. Excuse me, what can I get you? I turn around prepared to help the customer when I see the guy from outside. Oh, yes? As I looked at him clearly, I feel something stirring in the back of my mind. Why does he look so familiar? Have we met before? I tilt my head as I try to remember. Is he an old classmate, maybe? Maybe I knew him as a kid? <laughs> Are you trying to pick me up? He laughs and I feel a smile tugging at my lips as I watch his eyes sparkle happily. He, his cheeriness is contagious. Sorry, I must have mistaken you for someone else. I apologize, but the guy waves his hand at me. Don't worry about it. Anyways, I wanted to see if you could get some water for the dog. And a nice mocha for me. He's taking care of the dog. That's so sweet. Maybe it's his dog, you know, below. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I start to ring up his drink. Ah, crap. He's patting his pockets and suddenly looking embarrassed. This guy forgot his wallet too? I'm sure I have it. He's blushing slightly as he continues to dig in his pockets, confused growing on his confusion growing on his face. It's fine, I can start you a tab if you like. What's your name? He freezes for a moment, then looks up at the ceiling, deep in thought. Huh? He bites his lip. After another few moments of silence, he shrugs and flashes an apologetic grin. I guess I'll just take the water for the dog bed. Does he not want to give me his name? I blink with surprise, but grab a bowl and fill it with water. No, he's generally se he generally seems confused. I hand him the bowl. He takes it and glances at my name tag. Willow, what a cute name. My cheeks fl flush in his compliment. Anyways, thanks. He waves at me before heading outside of the cafe and setting into the bowl down in front of the puppy. I found myself watching them as he crouches next to the puppy, smiling. Something clicks in my thoughts. Hey, that kind of looks like... I fumble my pockets for my phone and begin to flip through the saved screenshots. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no, my finger freezes over the picture from the Otome game. It's an image of Milo petting uh, a stray with shaking... With a shaking hand, I hold my phone up side by side with the guy outside. Oh my god, I feel my heart stop for a second. It, it can't be real. <laughs> Her face! That would be my face too, oh my god. Before I can think about what I'm gonna do, I run outside. Oh hey again, Willow. He stares up at me expect expectantly. Your name isn't by any chance Milo. His eyebrows knit together in confusion for a second before he turns to me beaming. Yeah, how'd you know? I take a step back. No, it can't be. Do I know you from somewhere? I can't stop looking from the image of my phone to the guy in front of me. His outfit, his hair, his smile. Oh my god. <laughs> Suddenly, I remember all the guys I noticed this morning. The cool looking man on the crosswalk. 
the abrasive guy I tripped over in the park. The easygoing man who was listening to the musicians. The flirty man who winked at me. And the well-dressed man who couldn't find his wallet. And finally, the friendly guy who got water for a stray. <laughs> it can't be all of them? Um... Mila looks at me concerned, coloring his features. Are you okay? I'm fine. Uh, Milo, what is it you do for a living? Oh, I... He falls silent and the same confusion expression crosses his face. He seems to think hard about it for a little while. It's weird, I can't seem to... Milo cuts off again, lost in thought. It would be a different case if he had just said he was unemployed, but watching him get so confused, it's like he can't even remember anything. I realize this watching him struggle to remember his occupation in the same way he struggled to remember his name. Can't be the same, Milo. He can't. My man kept trying to rationalize, but I couldn't argue with what I was right in front of me. On the off chance that this is real, do you, uh... I hesitated for a moment before opening my game, opening the game on my phone and holding out to him. Do you recognize this? Milo's eyes grow wide as he looked at the screen of the game. That's... Milo looks at his beginning in panic. That's me! And all those other guys! The other guys? Do you remember them? <laughs> Milo looks back at the game. His hands are trembling. I don't know. I mean, I think so. They seem familiar. He begins to tap the screen madly, searching for an explanation. He freezes as the game shows the background of the game. Milo's house. That th That's my room. It's really him! <laughs> Oh my god! Milo suddenly looks at me, terrified. What's happened? I recognize that this is my house, but I don't know where it is. My heart clenches painfully at, the lo at his lost look. I'm still having trouble believing this is real. Milo stares back into the screen of my phone, looking at the drawing of his room. As I watch him, something dawns on, it, on me. What about the other guys? They're probably in the same state as Milo. No real home, no real job, no real money? Milo, I think I can help you. Huh? He tears his eyes away from the game and looks at me confused. We need to go find your friends. I think I ran into them not long ago. They're here? His expression brightens for a fleeting moment. But what are you gonna do? What am I gonna do? I pause him to think about it for a second, realizing I don't even know where to start. Look, for now, let's just find them, and then we'll try to figure this all out, okay? Milo doesn't respond as he stared blankly at my phone. He looks so sad. Oh, poor baby. I feel my heart clench even longer. I watch his lost expression. Milo, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you guys. Okay? I rest my hand on his shoulder, reassuring me. When Milo looks up at me, he has a familiar smile plastered on his face. Although I'm not too sure whether it's a real smile or if he's just putting it on for me, I feel a little less worried. Okay, let's go find them. I left the cafe with Milo after telling my boss that he was my brother and we had a family emergency. I feel kind of bad about lying. Who cares? Your boss is a dick. Well, the family part of wasn't a lie, but this really was an emergency. Although I know how important it is to find the guys, they're a part of me brimming with happiness. I have forced myself to bite back a smile when I think about how they must feel. They have no home, no money, no idea what's going on. I'm filled with worry as I remember how panicked I and lost Mila had looked. This must be so confusing. I jumped. I feel Mila grab my shoulder suddenly. Hey, Willow. I think that's. Milo points ahead of us as a figure exiting an electronics store, and I immediately recognize him. That's the guy from the mor this morning. Just as I'm thinking of ways to approach him, Hey, Foss! Milo shouts cheerfully. I see Foss stiffen before slowly while looking our way. Oh god, th this is the cold guy. There's like descriptions on the Kickstarter, like which guy is which. I believe he's like the cold, but secretly like... He's not like soon today but he's like really you know what i mean so he's kind of like vincent valentine i don't fucking know <laughs> he glares at the both of us oh hello milo he crosses his arms sighing i don't see why you have to shout though oh my god it, it's him it's really faust i hope this is how you pronounce your names i'm not entirely sure faust's attention finally falls on me oh you're the woman who paid for my coffee this morning eek those eyes <laughs> Oh my god. As Milo approached him, Foss stretches out his hand for a handshake. Milo completely ignores it and goes for a hug. <laughs> oh man. Oh my god. Foss, I'm so glad to see you. Milo tightens his hug around a frazzled Foss as he squirms free. 
What do you think you're- <laughs> I can't hold my laughter anymore and start snickering. What are you laughing at? Yikes. I immediately stifled my laughter as Phyllis glares at me. Come on, Foss. Don't be so cold. She's gonna help us. Help us. Oh, he doesn't know what re re he's really from the game, just like Milo. I open my mouth to start explaining, but Milo interrupts. Help us get home, Foss. Look, Milo, I... Foss still looks slightly irritated, but as he opens his mouth again to continue, he suddenly falls silent. Oh. My heart thuds painfully against my chest as I see Foss' eyes go wide while he tries to figure out where he came from. Just like Milo. Before I can say anything, Foss re regains his composure. <clears throat> I suppose this will give me an opportunity to repay you for covering my coffee this morning. I smile, and Milo pats Foss on the shoulder, playfully before we cross the street heading for the park. Milo and Foss chat behind me as I lead the way, trying to retrace my steps to finding the other guys I'd run through the, through the park. Yeah, it's so weird, right? I didn't even realize I could, couldn't figure out where my home or work or anything was until I really tried to think about it. Well, Milo's really the only one doing all the talking. Oh, that's it. Oh, wait, never mind. That's not him. I stop at my tracks as I catch sight of a familiar face. I don't even need to check my phone to know who he is. Dimitri! We both shout at the same time. Oh, Dimitri, oh my god. Oh, it's you. His eyes twinkle at me as one of the side of his mouth twitches up. But, um, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, that look. I bite my lip and try to stop blood. The blush that was flooding my cheeks. I already know Dimitri is the flirty type from the game, but experiencing this charming person is something entirely, entirely else. Oh my god, I would die. Hello, Dimitri! Milo steps in between Dimitri and I and places his hand on his hips. His mouth curves into a pout as he glares at Dimitri. Are you just gonna ignore us? Huh. <laughs> <sighs> His expression falters for a moment, then his su suave grim is back as he, as he turns away from me towards his two friends. Apologies, I was, uh, distracted. As he says this, he gives me a wink. <laughs> Can't the flirting wait till later, Dimitri? We're trying to sort some business. Huh, <sighs> it's always business with you, isn't it? What Foss means to say is that something's come up and we need you to come with us. Dimitri doesn't seem concerned with the fact that he doesn't look that he's listening to the wor word Milo is saying. He's staring at me at the corner of his eye, giving me a look that clearly says, Can you believe this guy? <laughs> Dimitri! Milo tugs up on his arm, but Dimitri isn't taking his eyes off of me. We're wasting time, Milo. If Dimitri wants to be a stubborn, then let him stay here. Foss sounds annoyed when he crosses his arms. Foss is right. We can't really afford to waste time. As I think about it, I realize how long it's been since I last spotted Enzo, Jin, and Alistair, and start to panic a little. Crap, the longer I wait here, the more likely it is they're gonna move on and gone somewhere else. Wait, if this is really is Dimitri's charismatic flirt, an idea crosses my mind. Dimitri, just come with us, please. I wince internally as I force myself to bat eyelashes at it and smile at him. Dimitri's eyes widen in surprise before he grins at me. Well, I can't say no to that. Ugh, really, Dimitri? <laughs> I love Foss's like, oh my god, his like facepalm face. It really worked. I can't believe it worked. I can feel my heart pounding as I looked at the three, the three of them. We continue further into the park, heading back over to the road I passed earlier. My stomach twists in a knot as I look, for, I look for the faces I had noticed this morning. Enzo? Jin? Milo, do you have to shout? Oh, Foss is always the fun police. <laughs> His face, he's so offended. Guys, now is not the, really the time. I sigh, trying to tune out their bickering as I scan the park for Jin. He was listening to a musician, right? Faint sound of the guitar strumming reaches my ears. <gasps> Do the guys hear that? Hear what? The guitar? Heart racing, I jog across the grass towards the music. But instead, seeing the guitarist with Jin listening the other way around. He's humming and strumming the strings with his fingers. Oh my god, he's playing! Oh my god! While the musician watches and nods. Jin! The music stops and Jin looks at me. His hands on the guitar back to its owner and approaches me. Hey, do we? Jin! We both turn to the shout to see Milo and Dimitri waving. Hello. <laughs> I like how just Foss is just like, whatever. Hey, Jin! Oh, hi, guys. Uh, what are you all doing here? Apparently, something happened. But she said she can help us out. 
Um, you have to come with us, Jin. We'll explain later. Jin looks somewhat overwhelmed with all their talking, but smiles at everyone and shrugs. Alright, I'm not totally sure what's going on here, but I trust you guys. He then turns to gaze at me. I don't think we've met. Oh my god. Oh my god, I would die. <laughs> his kind smile makes my heart beat faster. He keeps his gaze on me as he smiles and waits for my name. I'm Willow. Jin takes my hand in a gentle handshake. That's a lovely name. It's nice to meet you. Hey, don't go stepping on my turf, Jin. Dimitri winks playfully. Come on, guys, we still haven't found Enzo and Alistair. Jin gives me a soft smile and gently pats my shoulder. I can feel my cheeks growing red, but he then sighs and joins me alone in conversation. Where did you last see Enzo again? Uh, he was just taking a nap on the grass a little bit that way. I point towards my house in the direction I'd walk earlier. And, trip o and I tripped over him. You look nervous. I'm getting a little jealous. <laughs> Dimitri face pouting with a little glint in his eye. N nothing happened. I just tripped over him this morning. You did what? <laughs> it's not your fault, Willow. It's his for sleeping in the middle of the park. At least Jen is nice about it. Hey, loudmouths! Enzo glances up from underneath the nearby tree. He huffs, blowing some stray bangs out of his eyes. This is a public park, you know. Maybe try keeping it down. Indeed. Maybe you shouldn't be sleeping here then. <laughs> Enzo, we were looking all over for you. Well, not all over. Enzo groans grumpily. His eyes finally fall onto me. Eh, you're the girl this from this morning. Crap, he looks pissed. Uh, maybe take it easy, Willow. Yeah, she's here to help us out, so play nice. Ugh, play nice. Oh, okay, sure. There's a few seconds of silence before I realize Enzo has no intention of coming with us. Enzo, you should probably come with us. You're sounding awfully familiar with me. Oops. One of you to told a stranger about me. No, I... We didn't tell her anything, but she knows us and knows how to help. I can see that Enzo isn't really buying it, but his interest is... Uh, peaked? Peaked? I don't fucking know. Okay, this is Enzo, but he seems scary, but you know everything about him. I take a deeper breath and face him with my hands on my hips. Look, Enzo, if you want to lay here in the grass, that's fine, but don't come crying to me later when you don't have a place to sleep tonight. His face suddenly inches from mine as he glares down at me. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh my god. It takes everything I got to return his glare. After a few tense moments, Enzo sighs and averts his gaze. This better not be some trick or something. You'll thank me later. He crosses his arms and rolls his eyes. Yes, only one more to go. You could stand to tone down the excitement a little, Milo. No one pays attention to Enzo to fall in the back of the group, looking sullen. Oh my god, where's the last one? Where's Alistair? <laughs> I lead the guys to the street crossing I had spotted Alistair this morning. So, where did you see Alistair? He went in there. My eyes fall to the bookstore. I'd seen the guy I, I now knew was Alistair dart into. Why? It's not like he could buy anything without any money. Well, he probably didn't know us right away. Guys? Jin cuts off and points to the bus stop across the street. Oh! Alistair is sitting on the bus bench with his elbows on, on his knees. I check for the cars quickly before driving across the street towards the bus stop. Alistair! Oh god. Hey! Are you following me? Oh, you guys. Hey! You could sound a little happier to see us. Eh. He looks totally dis disinterested. Uh, Alistair? How do you know my name, huh? I don't really remember introducing myself. That's what I asked! <laughs> I can't explain it. I can't really explain how. Whatever. I can feel myself growing irritated as Alistair sighed and rolled his eyes. I'm just trying to help here. Help with what? He just kept interrupting me. Look, I'm going to explain it to everyone once we're somewhere private. Can't you just come with your friends? Nah, I'm fine here. What the hell? I turn to the other guys for help, but they shrug or don't meet my gaze. Like they're not too sure how to deal with Alistair's stubbornness. Come on, Willow, think. What would convince Alistair to come with us? Hey, have you had anything to eat today? Almost as if thank you, Alistair Summer Crawls. Okay, well, you don't have any money, right? Alistair just glares at me. If I offer you a treat you the lunch, would you come with us? Hey, what the hell, lady? 
<laughs> oh my god. Lunch for everyone, okay? Enzo's grumbling dies away, and I turn my attention back to Alistair. He glances to, uh, at each of the guys as if uh, looking for a signal. Fine. With a sigh, Alistair stands up from the bench and follows behind me as I lead everyone back to my parents' house. Wow, you really do know us! Mila leans over and speaks barely above a uh, whisper. You talked to everyone in into coming with you, which is an easy feel for some of them. I can't tell whether Milo is awed or upset by this. His voice sounds a little bit bit of both. Woo! We brought the boys home! Oh my god! <laughs> can't a guy at least get a drink around here? I'll take aloe juice. <laughs> oh god. Just water for me, please. Uh, coffee? What about types of sodas do What types of sodas do you have? And I'll take whatever you're having. <laughs> I love this. It's so funny. Uh, guys, I'm not your waitress. You can't just ask your, for your own drinks. Also, Alistair? Aloe juice? Really? <laughs> He's so offended. Jeez, fine. With an exaggerated sigh, Enzo's, uh, Enzo resumes sulking. You got us all here now. Are you going to tell us what's going on? What this is about? All the guys turn to look at me. Oh, with all their gazes on me, I suddenly realize what I had planned on saying sounds crazy. They're all right here. They're real guys. Well, my hand twitches nervously as I bit my lip, unsure of how to start. Do any of you guys know how you got here? Where you woke up this morning? What kind of question is that? Just do you know? Enzo glares at me. Then after a few seconds, his brows knit with confusion. I look around the room to see everyone else wearing a, a familiar expression, including Milo. This, this can't be right. I can't remember. What kind of trick are you playing, lady? Enzo, Alistair, and Foss are glaring at me. Chill, Enzo. No, seriously, what the hell is it? What, are, what the hell are you saying? Guys, maybe we should let Willow finish explaining? Enzo and Alistair grumble but fall silent, silent as, the, as the guys turn their ba eyes back to me. Well, I take a deep breath and tighten my fingers around my phone. I know this sounds crazy, but I actually already know all of you and where you came from. Uh oh. I don't know much else, but here. With the Atome game open on my phone, I show them the screen. What the hell? Uh oh. Whoa. With a shaking finger, I flip through my save images for them. Their eyes grow wider until Alistair snatches the phone from my hand. This is a mistake. It can't be real. I think it's real, Alistair. Don't re don't you remember this? What? That we're all part of some game? That's crazy. I recognize all of this, though. Me too. Do you have a better explanation? As the guys pass my phone around, I realize I've just been listening to their the back and forth conversation. Maybe I should give them some space. Ooh. Um. Okay. What seems to be the right answer here? Stay and listen or give them some privacy. Maybe give them privacy because they seem kind of freaked out about this. Okay, let's do it. Uh, guys, I know this is a lot. I'll give you some time to think, but if you need anything, I'll be in the room upstairs, okay? Thanks, Bobo. Mila waves and Jin shoots a smile at me before they, they turn back to their discussion. I think that's the right thing to do. <sighs> I wonder how they're doing. I can't hear them though through the walls and resist the urge to leave my room to go listen. They just need time to let it sink in. Seeing the game must have been a huge shock. I'm about to plop onto my bed when I hear a sudden knock at the door. Hold on a second. When I answer the door on the other side is... Oh no, you're gonna let me pick? Oh god, oh god. Who do I like? Let's see. Let's see, Alistair. Alistair Bernthoff. Snide, aloof, and cynical. Alistair has a hard time expressing himself. He tries to keep cool under a, de a cool demeanor even if he's caught with a genuine smile. Although he's he often lashes out in frustration, he regrets his actions when he has time to reflect. 27, March 3rd. Jesus Christ, all these boys are so fucking tall. Six feet, his blood type is A. Alright, see Jin? Sao Jin. Reserved, friendly, and protective. Jin always puts others before himself. He finds peace in easing the pain that he holds dear. However, this behavior has taken a toll on him, and his heart feels heavy with weight of unappreciated efforts. Oh my god! So he, he's like the, the sponge. He absorbs the feelings for you and like deals with it. Aww. He's 26. Uh, he's born on February 21st. He's 5 feet 10 and blood type B. Cool. Dimitri. Dimitri Vandal. Charming, dependable, and with a smile that kills, Dimitri is every woman's dream come true. 
Oh god. <laughs> so, struggling to find a balance between his love for the MC and the freedom he's always known. His indecisive seems the root of all of his problems. Dimitri's heart loves a woman's touch, but he's afraid to let let her keep it. Oh, he's not trustworthy. Age 26, born June 16, 5 foot 11, blood type B. So he's kind of like Eric from Seduce Me? Oh lord, help me. Alright, let's see Faust. No obstacle is overly ambitious when met by Mr. Faust Dower's dedication and hard work. He's a sensible man, well known for his uh, frugality, yet he spares no expense when dotting his lover. Although he loves to see his partner smile, Faust has a hard time relying on others and accepts nothing less than perfection. Oh dear, that's why he's so cold! Age 28, December 28, he's 6 feet damn is tall and uh, blood type AB. Enzo. Enzo Viteri? Viteer? I can't read. Enzo's gruff and ag agitated ways of speaking usually gives him a bad first impression, although his friends would attribute his abrasive demeanor to his moody, introvert nature. He doesn't trust easily and questions his worth often. Oh no! He's like a tsundere mixed with like a doubtful tsundere, I don't know. Enzo's self-esteem poses a struggle that only gets him harder when he begins to fall in love. Age 23, April 23, 5 flood at type A. Oh, he's kind of cute. I kind of like Enzo and Faust right now. Milo. Milo Kinnear. It's hard to find an optimist like Milo. He's famous for his high spirit and uncanny ability to flatter even in his most apathetic company. This optimism is always genuine, though not much of anything else. For someone who's open and carefree, his complex and secretive lifestyle is surprisingly lonely. Aww. Age 24, is number 4, is 5 feet 9, blood type B. Alright, so this is the end of the demo, you guys, and this is basically showing all the routes that you can take for this game. So there's gonna be six routes, and just like the descriptions I have said, these are the types of boys you could, um, have your main character romance in. So, I'm really excited about this. Whenever this game comes out, hopefully it will be soon. Um, I might, I might actually do a let's play. Let me, guys, let me know if you guys want me to do a let's play of this game when it comes out. And let me know which boy you want me to do because I'm not entirely sure. I'm kind of leaning towards Faust and Enzo, and then Alistair as well, because I'm into those those types of guys. <laughs> I'm t I'm into the broody types. I don't know if you know. the broody tsundere types. That's kind of like what I like. Okay. So that was Love is a Game, and so far it was pretty interesting, I really love the concept of this. Right now, like I said in the beginning, um, their goal is 11,000, but they have a bunch of stretch goals where um, they will expand the game even bigger, so uh, theme song, more CGs for each route, animated opening, partial voice acting, full voice acting, animated happy ending, and the initial funding for the next game, whichever game it is. It could be a sequel to this, or it could be a completely new one, because I know this company is Mixotome Games. So, um, if you guys want to grab the demo, like I said, there's a link in the description, or you can go to Ichio. They're going to be in the App Store as well for Google Play and on Steam. So these are the routes, like I mentioned earlier, the descriptions. Alistair is the tsundere, Jin is the natural, Dimitri is the flirt, Faust is the intellect, and uh, Milo is a sweetheart, and Enzo is the loner, but I kind of categorize him as like a tsundere. He's kind of a tsundere, I can't lie there. So I'm, I'm, honestly, my favorite one is probably Faust. Because I like the broody guys. Same with the tsundere. After next to him, it'd probably be Enzo, and then Alistair, and then Dimitri, Jin, and then Milo. I think they're all adorable. I love the art style of this game, and I love the concept, because like, isn't the ultimate goal of wishing that fictional characters would come into real life, whether it's a video game, movie, or a book, whatever it is. That's essentially what we think, right? So this is like, this is such an awesome concept that they're they're making into a Tomy game, so it's even better. And um, yeah, like I said, the story's awesome. Um, the art style is great. I like the music as well. I can't wait to see like what the CG will look like for each of the routes. And um... I think, yeah, I think we're gonna do a Let's Play whenever this game comes out. I really want to because, you know, I need more Otome games in my life and this is one of them. So I think it would be this. And I'm pretty sure, if I'm being completely honest right now, I'm probably gonna do Faust's route first because, you know, he's kind of broody. Kind of. So, <laughs> I kind of like that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you want to grab the demo yourself and play it yourself, there's a link in the description and if you want to check the Kickstarter out, and if you can, back it up so this game will become real. I'm pretty sure they'll they'll meet the their at least 
uh, assumed goal that they wanted to do um, pretty soon. But it would be really cool if there was voice acting in this game because, um, especially if you're reading it out loud, I'm not saying for like a let's play, if you're just reading it out loud, it's ve my voice is very tired because I'm talking so much. I don't know how voice actors like record for like five hours, you know what I mean? So um, if this was uh, voice acted, this would be really cool. I wonder what all their voices would look like because I can't do different voices and clearly you saw in this Let's Play my voice is very stupid. <laughs> all the voices I was doing was really stupid. Let me know in the comments who is your favorite boy. Even though we don't really know too much about them, so far your first impressions of the game and what you think each boy you know, who's your favorite. In the future, if I do do a let's play of this game after Frost, I'll make a poll and you guys can vote who's the next four I'm gonna do. We're gonna do this all over again. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video. It really helps me out a lot because it lets me know that you guys are enjoying my content. And, you know, if you know any other Otome games, please send them my way because, you know, I need more Otome games. Also, if you guys know any, like, like, gay Otome games too, that would be really cool because I, I like I like playing that kind of stuff as well. If you guys know any like Otome games that are for girls, because I don't see a lot of that like where it's not heterosexual, it's more like uh, gay centric. I don't really see many games like that and I want to play more games like that. So if you guys know any, just let me know in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next Let's Play. Bye!